sometimes I come across something that I that immediately strikes my eye in a very positive way. The Xilence XC061 or M7OD. Yes, there are the, yes there are two different names for the same cooler. Anyway, the XC061 was such a case. It's simple, the design is clean, it's relatively compact, and it's all black with, with a big white plus. And there is just generally something that makes me want to, to like it. So I asked for it, thank you to Xylance at this point, I installed it and I hoped. I hoped, please God, please let be good. A yes, yes, it is hella good, finally. So this is the new XC061 or M705D, or if you could uh, add a third name to it, but it is the cooler you should be aware of. This very simple all black single tower cooler uses five direct touch copper heat pipes to transport the heat up the 150 millimeter high cooler. There are two of Xylence's fans used on there, and although these look like some Somebody forgot to paint a bunch of red wings, those are 1600 rpm quick PVM fans which are pushing, I have no clue. Just like on the liquorizer, I, I have no clue. All I know is that there are two of these fans pre-attached to it and that they are spinning at 600 rpm. That's it, that's it. For the rest of the box we will get the usual stuff. A bunch of AMD and Intel mounting gear, a tube of thermal paste and a 1 to 2 PVM splitter to get both of these fans running of a single header. On the compatibility end it looks very up to date. LGA 1700 1200 and 1150s and 2011 and 2066 for Team Inter. Over on the red team we are looking at AM4. Point. To get the cooler installed it's quite the easy process. On AM4 we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and from there place the spacers on the leftover knobs, position the retention brackets in an outwards bending position and screw it down using the longer AMD screws. For Intel LGA 1712 and 1150 sockets Take the provided Intel backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes. On the other side, position the spacers on top of the outsticking screws. Just keep in mind that there are different ones for LGA 1700 and every other LGA. Now we can position the Intel retention brackets in a slightly outward sticking position and fixing them with the thumb screws. From here on both platforms, splash a gallon of thermal paste on top, slap the heat sink down, screw it down and then put your fans back in place. So with the installation done, let's get to the most important part which can make or break a cooler. RGB, no I'm joking, benchmark. Using our usual setup, the XC061, no the M705D, how I will call it, managed to keep the 3900 at 49 degrees C. At 49 degrees C. That's a single degree behind the NHG15 and on the same level as a Noctua NHU12A. That what gives. On the noise to performance chart, nothing changed. Here we can see that Xylence's push-pull monster managed to stay just a tick behind the NHU12A. All across the board, while at the same time completely annihilating something that is actually comparable price-wise, like something like a Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo. So as it turns out, my hope became reality. This thing is freaking awesome. Not only is, is the quality pretty solid, which is not really like a big wonder now where I know that Xylence is actually just a sub-brand of Be Quiet, uh, things good to know, right? But it's all black design with a, a bit of, of white pluses, it's extremely easy to integrate into many builds and for somebody like me it just looks strong. That being said, there are also some outstanding positive aspects aside from performance and that's the installation method. If you've ever installed a Be Quiet cooler before, you know the pain that it takes to remove the hammery that appears after you had to install that central mounting bridge. Well, on Xylence's XC061, it's not there. But the most important aspect is, is the position on the market. Looking at the benchmark charts, this thing places itself right behind the Noctua NHU12A. However, it is considerably more affordable. On the other hand, this thing beats the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo, while being just a tick more expensive during writing of, of this script. So in the end, what we are actually looking at right here is basically a, a better version of the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo while being 
quite comparable in both size and performance. So where does all of this leave us? Well, from our side, absolute recommendation. Considering that the Xilence managed to deliver this highly affordable package of, of pure cooling power, this is definitely a cooler you should be aware of for any future build featuring basically every consumer grade CPU. But okay, this should be it for the Xilence XC061, M705D and, and all the other names that will come up in, in the future. At this point, a huge thank you to Xilence for providing us this very surprising, no, not surprising, like, thank you for Xilence for making my dreams come true. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the Xilence Liquid Riser 360. That's basically like a, a more affordable version of a Liquid Freezer 360, and now where I am saying it out loud, I kind of see a pattern here. Also, during the release of this video, we still have a giveaway for a mousepad, a beautiful mousepad, going on on, on Instagram. So uh, if you want to join in, uh, the link for the Instagram post will be in the description below, so, you know, you can try your luck. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join and start a fight about single tower versus dual tower coolers, that's the place to go. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.